Welcome back to part two of SkyTree's three-part webinar series, The Future of CO2 Supply in Vertical Farms. My name is Camille Hanna, and I am SkyTree's Business Development Director for North America. As I talk through the presentation today on vertical farms, please make sure that you add your questions to the questionnaire box. We will make sure that we get to them at the very end of the webinar. And I will also be bringing on John Quinn, our Technical Sales Support Manager. If you joined us for part one, you'll know that SkyTree's technology is global. However, today we're at SkyTree's headquarters in Amsterdam, Netherlands. SkyTree has over six labs that are focused on research and development, innovation, and rapid prototyping. We have a team of over 75 people here and we're expanding globally. Today, we'll be walking you through the prototypes that SkyTree began with and where we've ended up today. We will also be sharing a little bit more from one of our partners, GetBlock in Pennsylvania, about why they believe SkyTree's technology will benefit their farms. Let's dive into how CO2 is used on vertical farms today and the challenges that are presented. Typically, CO2 is coming from two sources. It's either coming from natural gas that's burned on site or it's coming from point source capture. Both are usually fossil fuel based sources. When we look at point source capture, which is liquid CO2 that's delivered to a farm, what we're seeing is that large emitters like oil refineries, for example, will give off CO2 in their manufacturing processes. This CO2 can be captured. It's then purified, liquefied, and driven to a vertical farm. It sounds like it's a great practice. Uh, what otherwise would be going into the air is now being captured and utilized in an agricultural farm. What actually ends up happening in this process is you end up amplifying emissions because it requires energy to purify, liquefy, and then drive the CO2 to the farm, which is not a good sustainable practice for vertical farms. In addition to that, we're also seeing that a lot of these large emitters are starting to divert their supply of CO2 to be stored permanently, which allows them to claim and neutralize their emissions. This means that there will be a shortage of CO2 supply in the future, which will drive up prices. In addition to that, we're also seeing that there are government regulations coming into play that make it more difficult for agricultural practices to utilize fossil fuel-based CO2. So there's a big need to change, and we're well positioned to introduce DAC as a way to provide CO2 to vertical farms. We think there's a better way of CO2 supply on vertical farms, and that's through direct air capture, which put very simply is pulling carbon dioxide out of ambient air to then be utilized on site at a vertical farm. By having a direct air capture unit on site, you no longer have to rely on third parties to bring your CO2 in. That means that you constantly have supply when you need it on demand. It also means that you are not experiencing price volatility as you would when CO2 demand goes up and down. We have various unit sizes that are modular and can meet the needs of your specific farm. Our smallest unit, which is the cumulus unit, is 20 kilograms of CO2 per day. This model actually shows three cumulus units stacked on top of one another. And for every three cumulus units, you need one cumulus control unit. That has all of the equipment inside that's necessary to run the units. The last part of the system is this buffer tank, and this tank collects the CO2 after it's pulled out of the air, and it's attached to whatever dosing system you use so that you can utilize the CO2 whenever you need it. In addition to the cumulus unit, we have a Stratus portfolio that consists of three different unit sizes. The smallest is our Stratus Hybrid 10. The unique thing about that unit is that it can utilize thermal energy as well as electricity to bring down electricity consumption and we can talk to you about whether that's a good fit for your farm. In addition to that, there's the Electric 10 unit that produces 925 kilograms of CO2 per day and the Electric 20 unit, which will be available later in 2025, and that produces 2,500 kilograms of CO2 per day. We'd love to chat with you about which unit size would work best for your operation and have developed tools to be able to analyze the business case for you to ensure that it's a compelling offer. Next up, we'll hear from Vinny at GetBlock Farms. GetBlock Farms is one of our early partners. They're based in Pennsylvania in the United States. They plan to use our direct air capture units, specifically the Cumulus, for their vertical farms to create a circular CO2 supply, but they also have an interesting use case where they will be applying for a grant to pull CO2 out of the air near a steel factory where they can then utilize that CO2 to sell to other partners. 
You know, my name is Vinny Lima. I'm the managing member and president for GetBlock Farms. We're based in southwestern Pennsylvania near the metropolis of Pittsburgh uh, in a town called Aliquippa. Um, our focus around GetBlock Farms was in the mission of the concept of moving farms into urban areas instead of transporting food long distances, sometimes greater than 1,500 miles to grocery stores. And so what we've done in 2022 and 23 is launch a pilot in bringing one of the latest generation controlled environment hydroponic farms, as you can see behind us, which is a completely controlled environment sealed from all elements and risks from the outside atmosphere. And we, what we call is a perfect growing environment for the perfect produce. So we grow lettuce, leafy greens, herbs, and roots year round here in the Pittsburgh area. And furthermore, because we're based into and deployed into local communities, it serves local communities of needs, as well as it drives economic force around our hiring and internship program that introduces STEM and the latest generation around agricultural technology. Now, the reason why we looked forward and we were seeking the partnership with SkyTree um, is to drive an aspect of our sustainable mission around how to grow food in the most responsible and sustainable way. Being in Pittsburgh, especially in the corridor of the Ohio River, which has been since the early 1900s, a uh, beacon for the steel industry. And to this day, there's still a large industrial base in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, pollution and CO2 emissions is a great concern from an uh, climate as well as from an environmental problem here in the Pittsburgh area. And so one of the things we wanted to do is to introduce uh, the concept of regenerative uh, capture and consumption of CO2. And we felt that SkyTree, when we we're doing our market research, was leading the, the innovation around the ability to introduce direct air carbon capture into a modular form that can be brought into local communities so that there's a local impact to the local environment, right? So instead of introducing large capital investments of large innovation around carbon capture, SkyTree has the ability for us to not only bring that closer in a non-disruptive manner for local communities, but also to our benefit, which is to, in a sustainable fashion, generate and capture CO2 for use in our farm. So today we have to source CO2 as part of our climate, our controlled environment climate uh, from fossil fuel based industries. And a lot of that is a side product of steel production still to this day and other uh, manufacturing production. And while that is um, available, it doesn't fit well with our sustainable mission, which is 100% renewable energy consumption for all the energy efficient LED lights you see here behind me, 97% um, less water consumption than any traditional farming. Some days because of a climate, um, climate management system we have in the farm, we produce more water from humidity than sometimes the plants consume. And so part of that sustainability is also any of the inputs we use into the farm besides just electricity and water, which is CO2, because we do leverage CO2 to foster plant growth. And so with our partnership with SkyTree, we have two use cases. One, capture carbon in a sustainable manner to be used in agriculture and through photosynthesis, really convert CO2 to oxygen, which is a beautiful thing. Um, but secondarily is also the excess capacity to leverage for the local businesses in the food and restaurant industries who are actually having to source CO2 or large amounts for their industry, for their food production, but be able to provide that to local businesses in a cost-effective manner, also in a sustainable manner. So that's our mission and the reason why SkyTree for us was very interesting and compelling, not only the innovation, but also the portability, as I mentioned earlier, the ability to bring into an urban area has its own challenges doing large industrial carbon capture. So be able to do that in a modular sense and be able to grow over time was very compelling for us. So how do we get started? I'd love to schedule a call with you to chat about your CO2 needs, the installation requirements, and which unit size is a perfect fit for your operation. Once we've had that conversation, we can draft a formal proposal and quote for you. And as soon as you execute that quote, you'll get added to our delivery schedule. Thanks again for your time today. Now I'm going to pass it off to Gunther, who will show you our cumulus unit, 
talk to you a little bit about how it works on vertical farms, and then he'll be walking you through some of the early SkyTree prototypes and how we've gotten to where we are today. Thanks, Camille, uh, and welcome. My name is Gunter from Mullendorf, and I am the head of mechanical engineering here at SkyTree, been at the company for just over two years. Today, I'm going to go through what is DAC from an engineering perspective, uh, our key minus units, the current progress, our design process, as well as some old prototypes. How do our cumulus systems work, is the question? Well, they operate in two phases. Phase one, we have the adsorption cycle, and phase two, desorption. During the adsorption cycle, air is pulled through our system via our fans. That air, well, gets pushed through our sorbent. The sorbent then removes the CO2. From there, cycle two starts. And during cycle two, the system is closed off. A vacuum is formed and a temperature swing takes place. The CO2 gets released, and then pull towards our control unit. In our control unit, we then push that CO2 to a higher purity by removing all unnecessary gases and moisture. From there, it's moved towards our storage tank where the client can use it. Now, how is our system integrated into the client's site? Well, it's quite easy. We design our system to be modular and easy to install. We can also quite easily monitor how our system performs with our SkyTree software. This software allows us to also monitor the purity of the CO2, the production rate, as well as not maintenance is required. Now looking at some of our old prototypes, we started with our Rhino project you can see over here, this being a later iteration. It was supposed to be used in car cabins as well as buses to help purify the system in there and the air quality, thus reducing the energy required from air conditioning systems. But after tech readiness assessment, we realized we needed to shift our attention somewhere else, that being vertical farms. From there, we moved into a small cartridge, one kilogram cartridge, which we still use today to do some initial testing for different sorbent material. Uh, from there, we built our first unit, first pilot project, which worked in the field with one of our partners. What are some of the challenges that we faced during the production and design of our cumulus unit? As we scaled up our systems, we realized that we're gonna have issues with pressure drop as well as flow rates. Because with the biggest sizes, realistically, you're looking at some, some odd changes. So that's why here we found that if we cycle the air not just straight through our cartridges, but through a, a weaving process, we might have ever so slightly higher pressure drops, but much better flow rates across our sorbent, thus much better sorption, as well as a much more compact system. From there, we needed to, again, upscale, because that's what clients needed to actually produce for their systems. From there we moved to a five kilogram unit. That later became the Cumulus Alpha. That switch happened when we moved to vacuum, which was a big change for SkyTree and a big change for the engineering department. And lastly, as we tested, we discovered more points that we had to address, improving the production rate, reducing the size, reducing the energy consumption. These are all key points we've had to focus on during our develop process and had to take a lot of time and effort to improve. We also have our units in the field that we monitor constantly. Our units with the clients, we are tracking all the data and making sure to take that into account for future integrations and future upgrades to our units. Thanks so much. That's all on the DAC process, our innovation journey and the engineering process behind SkyTree Cumulus. Now handing over to Camille and John, who will address any remaining questions you might have.